Animal laboratory experiments are an unfortunate necessity for any emerging technology that's eventually supposed to go inside the human body. And as brain-computer interfaces are more and more becoming a reality for humans, animals have had brain implants implanted into their heads for many decades giving them extraordinary abilities or giving us the ability to learn more about their way of experiencing their world. In this video I'll be showing you the craziest and most interesting brain implant experiments done to lab animals. This video may be the first of its kind to show us the world through the eyes of an animal. In this case through a cat's eyes. The cat has had electrodes implanted into its visual cortex inside its brain so that the scientists got the ability to see what the cat is seeing. As a way of comparing what we see and what the cat sees, the cat is shown a movie. What the cat sees is then projected onto the right side of the screen. You won't believe what you're going to see at the end. The picture has a lot of random flickering, the noise. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. probably the, the noise of the, the actual uh, neurons. Because they sometimes fire spontaneous spikes. We consider those noise, but maybe they reflect something else, maybe the, the thoughts or, or something. But we can distinguish that, so when we use all of those, thinking that they represent visual information, this is the reconstruction that we come up with. It is the first time an image was tapped from a brain. It proves that we can read and understand the grammar of it. The face is recognizable, but I still can't avoid the impression that the face has something cat-like. This is really unsettling but also unbelievably amazing to watch. Could you see the cat face too? Perhaps the studies that cats see us humans as really large cats is more literal than originally thought. I hope more studies like that are going to be done in the future to maybe allow us to understand how animals view this world of ours and maybe we'll even learn a bit of sympathy toward them in the process. The next animal experiment is a bit more conventional but the results are crazy good and even to this day probably unmatched by any other brain-computer interface connected to an animal or human being. In this experiment, the monkey has had a brain chip implanted that not only lets the monkey control a robotic arm but is also able to actually feel a touch sensation coming from that arm. The proficiency at which the monkey is using that arm to grab food is incredible. Incredible as it may seem, these monkeys learned to feed themselves with a robot arm that was being directly controlled by their brains, as if it was simply part of them. This is a biofeedback closed loop kind of experiment and that there's an automatic, almost an automatic learning that's going on. Um, the possibilities are absolutely endless and especially with the recent advancements in the field of brain-computer interfaces from companies such as Elon Musk's Neuralink or Paradromics, these types of robotic arms will likely change the lives of amputees in the not-so-distant future. Perhaps a future like the one portrayed in Cyberpunk 2077 where bionic limbs are commonplace, isn't all that far off. You might think that a technology like brain chips are a very recent invention and not something people back in the day couldn't have even dreamt of, but that couldn't be further from the truth. In 1960, neuroscientist Jose Delgado pioneered brain-computer interfaces. In part because it was relatively unencumbered by ethical regulations, Delgado's research rivaled and even surpassed much of what is being done today. In 1965, the New York Times reported on its front page that he had stopped a charging bull in its tracks by sending a radio signal to a device implanted in its brain. He also implanted radio-equipped electrode arrays, which he called stimoceivers, in dogs, cats, monkeys, chimpanzees, gibbons, and humans. With the push of a button, he could evoke smiles, snarls, bliss, terror, hunger, garrulousness, lust, and other responses. In Madrid, Delgado switched his focus to non-invasive brain stimulation methods, anticipating current exploration of techniques such as transcranial magnetic stimulation. Because he published primarily in Spanish journals, his work fell into obscurity. Brain implant studies back in the US became engulfed in ethical controversies. Grants dried up, researchers drifted to other fields, and little work was done until the recent revival. Meanwhile, conspiracy theorists began depicting Delgado as a fascist who sought to enslave people by means of neurotechnology. But the results speak for themselves. Electronic mind control research is not new. A scientific milestone in this area came in the 1960s, when Dr. Jose Delgado demonstrated remote control over a charging bull. 
By connecting a radio antenna to electrodes inserted into the bull's brain, Delgado proved that the animal's aggressive impulses could be thwarted by electronically manipulating the bull's muscle reflexes. Do you realize the fantastic possibilities if from the outside we could modify the inside? Could we give messages to the inside? But the beauty is that now we are not using electrodes. In recent years, Delgado has shown that the behavior of monkeys can be altered using low-power pulsating magnetic fields. But in these experiments, there were no antenna implants. Any function in the brain, emotions, intellect, personality, well, could be perhaps modified by this non-invasive technology. Delgado's research has so far been limited to animals. But in the Soviet Union, a radio frequency, or RF device, has been used for over 30 years to manipulate the moods of mental patients. Not all these experiments are bad for the animal and only meant to serve humanity. This following experiment and medical procedure allowed a paralyzed monkey to walk again with the help of brain-computer interfaces. The researchers at the Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne inserted an implant in the brain area responsible for walking. The implant records and interprets intentions to produce movements. The data is then sent wirelessly and in real time to a pacemaker inserted just below the spinal cord. Thanks to this interface, the monkey suffering from a paralyzed leg thinks about the leg movement and then the implant stimulates the muscles inside the paralyzed leg making it walk in the way that the monkey intended. While this is great for the animal, this also shows us a future where robotic limbs might not even be necessary for people who didn't have them amputated and are just paralyzed. They could simply use their existing limbs again with the help of this technology. No brain-computer interface video is complete without showing at least one thing about Elon Musk's Neuralink. Before they are able to actually implant a Neuralink chip into the heads of human beings, they have to test the implantation and actual usability on animals. In Neuralink's case it's pigs. For this video they put a pig on a treadmill and tracked the position of its joints. But I'll just let Elon explain it. Uh, in, in, in terms of additional uh, brain reading activity, uh, when we have, um, say, um, one of our pigs on a treadmill, <laughs> pig on a treadmill, <laughs> um, funny, funny concept, really. Um, and we uh, take the, the readings from the neurons and we try to predict the posi position of the joints. Um, and so we say we have the predicted position of the joints and then we, we measure the actual position of the joints you can see that they're almost exactly aligned. So we're able with um, a wireless neural, imp neural implant to actually predict the position of, of all of the limbs uh, in the pig's body uh, with, with very high accuracy. Now imagine this being used to track and then replicate the position of an amputee's limbs within their motor cortex and then replicating the assumed movements on robot limbs. Or maybe even further down replicating the intended movements inside of a virtual world. The sky is the limit. Now for something more fun. In this experiment, they use a beetle as some sort of drone and control it by using a Wii remote. Absolutely ridiculous but it's crazy to see how well this actually works out. I wonder with what other animals you could do this. A Wii remote. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, all I gotta do is blow on its back to make its wings go. And then I can control it with this controller by pressing a button and moving it to a side. Hey, it worked. It went right. Als ik dan naar rechts druk, dan gaat hij naar rechts. En het werkt. The awesome part about this is that you can put sensors onto the beetles that give them the ability to sense certain things such as humans for example. Then you could send them into either dangerous or tight spots in which you control them to find people under rubble. A much more cost-efficient and faster way than using drones, big robots or regular dogs. Very unconventional but I'm sure rescuers would appreciate an invention like this. What if you could change someone's memories or add completely new ones? Could you make people learn things they've never heard of before? In this video, scientists managed to implant new memories into the minds of mice which then learned how to navigate through a completely unknown maze. When you're forming a memory, there's a very specific subset of brain cells that are active. We can go in and identify the brain cells that were active when a mouse, for example, was making a particular fear memory, trick those brain cells to respond to pulses of light, and then shoot light into the brain and ask, does the animal recall that fear memory? This way of creating new memories or restoring old ones would be an awesome capability to use for people suffering from Alzheimer's or dementia. 
For example, if they forget where they live or who someone they actually know is, the implant could simply rewrite that memory back into their brain. If it's one day possible to alter human memory, who should be allowed to receive that treatment? Should it go only to those who can afford it? What about children? And would the justice system be at a disadvantage if key witnesses and victims can't remember a crime? So what is your opinion on using animals to test brain-computer interfaces until human testing becomes a possibility? Is it an unfortunate necessity to test on animals or should it not be done regardless of the great possibilities it can pose to humanity in the future? Do you think BCI will ever leave the labs in the first place? Please tell us about it in the comments and let us have some nice discussions about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.